The class system is a famous part of British culture, yet that system has been usurped in recent years by none other than Tony Blair. Why? Because he took the Labour Party, which was, remember, created to represent the interests of the working class, and turned it into a middle-class party with liberal interests. This has led to large swathes of the middle class becoming socially liberal and believing they're morally superior to everybody else. They look at the characteristics of the working class, direct honesty, patriotism, and find these things disgusting in their hyper-intellectual globalist outlook. Yet they cannot say that they don't like the working class out loud. That, of course, would undermine their own tolerant ideology. So they use a byword for the working class. It's the hypotheses of this video that that byword is far right. Now, I noticed this after watching a review from Politics Joe, they're a London liberal media outlet, on the recent Tommy Robinson march. These rallies attract a diverse crowd, not demographically, but belief-wise. There you go. From the very start of the video, he gives a knowing nod to the trendy London liberal middle classes. This march is not diverse, which in the globalist mindset is bad, and white working class, and these people are bad. One of the next things they show in their intro to sum up how bad these people are is that one of them has a tattoo of the global evil boogeyman. Oh man. But let's look at some of the views these terrible far-right bigots have. As a Christian, I'm beginning to feel um, persecuted. I'm beginning to feel like I'm losing my freedom of speech. There's things I can't say. Mm. I can say something that's just opinion and it might be accused, for instance, of being Islamophobic. And is she wrong about any of this? In recent weeks, we've had a Christian man convicted of praying silently near an abortion clinic. And if you believe that Islamic values cannot align with British values, you wouldn't be arrested for that yet, but you would be seen as someone to watch, someone with extreme opinions, and certainly someone whose opinions aren't welcome in the mainstream. And of course, that's not because Muslims have come to Britain and been a model minority who've never caused any problems whatsoever. It's because they're a minority, and in the liberal mindset, that means they're victims and innocent all the time. Just come to support Tommy Robinson and his gang of people to try and restore this country. What do you need to restore this country? Well, in my opinion, it's probably a little bit too late, but got to bring it back from the brink of Islamic takeover, whatever you want to call it, whoever takes over. It's just, it's just getting insane in this country. What makes you say that? What makes you, what makes you say we're on the brink of an Islamic takeover? Watch the news. No, wrong. Don't watch mainstream news. What we're seeing here is a classic looking for a gotcha moment, and the presenter believes he gets it when the man states he doesn't watch mainstream media. That to the liberal is a sign that somebody has been radicalised. After all, you should always trust the BBC. They tell the truth, right? Of course, the only reason they think they tell the truth is because the BBC shares the same liberal outlook that they have. But again, they can overlook all of that because slick media-trained London liberals can ram a microphone in the face of a working class man who's probably never been on camera before and make out that everybody who has the views that he has is stupid. Yet while this man may not be able to give fancy intellectual answers, he is fundamentally correct. Birth rates in the UK and Europe are going way down. Islamic birth rates are going up. On top of that, Christianity and the values associated with that is all but destroyed in the Western world. He's also correct, in my view, to say whatever takes over Britain, and if I could be so bold as to put some words in his mouth, I think what he's referring to is liberalism. After all, when we look around as our working environments, politics, academia, media, it's all swamped with liberal ideology these days. But just after this fella saying he doesn't trust the media, listen to what this guy does next. The people here are really suspicious of the media. One guy told me that Al-Qaeda were even in attendance. He actually meant Al Jazeera. Now, maybe that interaction happened, maybe it did not, but you can see what the reporter's trying to do here. He's using one example of an interaction that he's got no evidence for to tarnish the whole of the marchers as stupid because they can't differentiate between the terrorist group Al-Qaeda and the Middle Eastern media outlet Al Jazeera. And this just goes to show why they don't trust the media and secondly, why they're right not to trust the media because you will smear and lie about them. We were supporting Tommy Robinson and doing a piece Peaceful march. And it was peaceful. Totally peaceful. Uh, we just wanted to be a presence mm -hmm. and to show our support. What a disgusting far-right woman. Let's see what a toxic bigot husband has to say. Obviously he organised this march but he's been remanded in custody. Yeah. Do you, what do you think people here are missing without, without Tommy being here? 
nothing because it's not about Tommy Robinson although he, he seems to be a figurehead for this movement yeah. it's about Absolutely. the grassroots every single one is the same as Tommy Robinson now everyone is aligned in the views that British people need to book British people first and it the British government rather needs to put British people first and I say British I don't care race creed religion someone who identifies with British values now I wouldn't exactly say I'm a signed up Tommy Robinson fanboy but that guy's too much on the liberal side for me yet I think this guy hits the nail on the head in his next comment when he shows that the Tommy Robinson supporters are largely the working classes who've been forgotten by the Labour Party what decisions are the government making that you object to they don't seem to be British uh, to be putting British people first they yeah. seem to be putting everybody else apart from the British person and particularly the British working class who they're meant to represent being the Labour Party. When you think about it, it's pretty cruel what Blair, the Blairites and the London Liberals have done to the British working classes. They've essentially ostracised them from the political discourse and when they raise their voices, they demonise them as evil and far-right. And remember, when they call people far-right, they don't mean the political position far-right. The Liberals don't seem to know what that is. They mean it is a byword for angry, hateful and largely working class. And of course, you can always find someone in any movement who's full of anger and hate. In fact, you get a lot of it on the modern left wing. But as you've seen from these clips, and as I saw when I was at the march myself, there wasn't much anger and hatred at all. In fact, I didn't see any on the march. But let's watch how this ever trustworthy politics Joe journalist closes this piece out. As Tommy Robinson rallies go, this was a relatively dull affair. It's dull because he didn't see any violence, which he'd label as extreme if he did, and dull is also a byword for peaceful because he can't admit that. But, low energy or not, thousands did feel compelled to come and show their support for the far right in the UK. These people are radical anyway, but just coming to this event can radicalise them even further. So because this guy couldn't find any actual, you know, evidence of the evil far right, he has to lie and smear about these people to make out that they're already far right, but they left even more radicalised. They might arrive a vaccine sceptic and leave fully versed in the Great Replacement Theory. Remember this one, because this is a common leftist manipulation tactic. The fellow references the Great Replacement Theory that's come up in response to the vast amounts of mass migration coming into the Western world. Leftists will expound on this theory and find the most wacky example and then use that to express the views of the majority who have concerns about mass immigration. They do this because it keeps the liberal narrative in control. When an average person walks down their high street and sees the massive change that's occurred, they immediately think, this is just a far-right conspiracy theory, nothing to see here. And the conspiracy theory that the liberal type showed may have been wacky. However, the notion that Europeans are getting outnumbered in Europe is not a conspiracy theory. In fact, studies are showing in Britain alone that the Brits may be a minority by 2070, some are saying by 2050. If there are any echo chambers in politics, it's here. They tell each other that the media, politicians, the liberal elite are all against them. And if you disagree with them, then you're part of the problem too. Now, why oh why would they have that idea? Do let me know your thoughts down below. Do consider subscribing to the channel if you're new.